Hello everyone, Paleo Nerd here with the final part of the Natural History of Tyrannosaur idea. If you somehow haven't watched the first two parts already, please do so as that will save a lot of time and spare me from having to explain all the subgroups again. This video is going to be all about the dinosaurs that might be Tyrannosaurids, but their classification as Tyrannosaurs isn't confirmed. This also includes animals that are nomen dubium due to being based on fragmentary remains, as well as confirmed tyrannosaurs that haven't been named or described yet. In order to make this video as short as possible, I'm only going to highlight some of the more well-known or popular possible tyrannosaurs, as there's really too much to try and fit in one video. I'll also try to make a lot of these entries really short, as there's not really a lot to say about most of these due to how poorly known they are. Finally, keep in mind that this video is based on what is available at the time I'm recording and editing this video, and it is very likely that some of the animals featured in this video will either turn out to be tyrannosaurs or some other type of theropod. Also, sorry in advance if I mispronounce anything in this video. First in this video is one you might remember if you watched my original part 1 video. Iliosuchus incognitus, or unknown crocodile hip, is a dubious species of theropod known only from three fragmentary bones from the ilia. The fossils were discovered in the Stonesfield Slates member of the Tayton Limestone Formation in Oxfordshire, England which has been dated to the Bathonian Age of the Middle Jurassic about 168 to 166 million years ago. The holotype specimen was named by Friedrich von Huen in 1932, and its classification has been dubious ever since. Based on the remains, the animal is estimated to reach a length of 1.5 meters or 5 feet long, a height of 50 centimeters or over a foot tall at the shoulder, and a weight of around 5 kilograms or 11 pounds. Due to the fragmentary nature of the remains, the exact classification of Iliosuchus is difficult to determine. The closest we could get is that it's some sort of tetanurin, and while it has sometimes been considered a basal tyrannosaurid, the current fossils can't be distinguished from that of small megalosaurus specimens, meaning it could very well simply be a baby megalosaurus. This can't be confirmed, however, as the remains are too fragmentary and incomplete to be diagnostic, and as such, Iliosuchus is currently a nomen dubium. If it is indeed a Tyrannosaurid, Iliosuchus would likely be the most basal member of the family, possibly even before the split between Proceratosauridae and Panteronosauria. Next is another entry from the original Part 1 video. Celuridae. Originally a wastebasket group filled with many unrelated small theropods, Celuridae now consists of two or maybe even just one species of small Celurosaur, Celurus fragilis and possibly Tanicolagrius toplosinae. Both of these species are known from the Morrison Formation of North America, which dates to the late Jurassic about 155 to 150 million years ago. Most phylogenetic analyses of the two seem to either place them as basal solurosaurs or basal tyrannosaurids, and some studies suggest that the two aren't even closely related, meaning it's possible that Tanicolagrius is a tyrannosaurid while Solurus isn't, or vice versa. If this group is within Tyrannosauridia, it would likely be as a sister group to the clade containing Proceratosauridae and Pantyrannosauria. Now we're on to the first of many tooth taxa in this list. These are taxa described solely based on teeth and or jaw fragments, which can be problematic for classification since unrelated animals can often have similar looking teeth. Starting this wonderful category is Nuthades Destructor, or Monitor Destroyer, which references the similarity of the teeth to that of monitor lizards, as well as their adaptations for piercing and cutting. This species is known exclusively from teeth and jaw fragments, 
found in the Churdy Freshwater member of the Lulworth Formation in England, which dates to the Bariocian of the Early Cretaceous, about 143 to 139 million years ago. Alongside similarly fragmentary dinosaurs like the Iguanodon Oenodon and the Heterodontosaur Echinodon. Luthades was originally described by Richard Owen in 1854 as a varanid lizard. Then in 1888, it was identified as a dinosaur and was reclassified as a species of Megalosaurus until 2002 when the fossils were re-examined and they were reclassified as belonging to a Dromaeosaurid, specifically a Velociraptorine. However, in 2010, it was pointed out that the teeth of Velociraptorines are incredibly similar to that of Proceratosaurid Tyrannosaurids, and thus, Nuthades may actually be a Proceratosaur. This could also apply to other alleged Dromaeosaur teeth from the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous found throughout Europe. So it could very well be the case that Tyrannosaurids were much more common in Europe than originally thought. Known only from two fragmentary vertebrae, Embosaurus minax, or threatening Emba lizard, is known from early Cretaceous rocks in Kazakhstan which date to the Bariasian of the early Cretaceous, around 140 million years ago. Due to the fragmentary nature of the fossils, all we know for sure regarding its classification is that it is some sort of theropod, and while some studies do seem to suggest that it could be a basal tyrannosaurid, others seem to suggest that it could be either a megalosaurid or an allosaurid. If it is a Tyrannosaurid, Embosaurus seems to be most similar to Jiang Guanlong, being more derived than Dilong but outside Tyrannosauridae. If this classification is indeed correct, then Embosaurus would be one of the first Cretaceous Tyrannosaurids. And given that it's been estimated to reach a length of 8 meters or 26 feet long, it's certainly possible that certain Tyrannosaurids were already starting to grow to large sizes by the very beginning of the Cretaceous period. Another group of possible Tyrannosaurs, which I mentioned in the original Part 1 video, is Megaraptora, a clade of large theropods whose exact classification within Ave Theropoda has been hotly debated, with most studies placing them as Neovenatorid Cercarodontosaurs or Basal Solarosaurs with some even suggesting they are basal Tyrannosaurids. Currently, members of this group have been found in South America, Australia, Asia, and possibly Africa, and they existed for a large portion of the Cretaceous period, about 130 to 83 million years ago. Recent studies seem to suggest that Megaropterans are basal Solarosaurs outside Tyrannosauridia, although this could very easily change in the future. Tanuchisaurus mongoliensis is the informal name of a theropod found in the Shinhe Kudog formation in Mongolia, which dates from the Huaturivian to the Baramian of the early Cretaceous, about 132 to 125 million years ago. These remains consist of disarticulated arm and leg bones, the discovery of which was first announced in a Japanese newspaper article in 1994, and Dr. Rinchen Barsbold stated that the description was in the press, although to this day no such description has emerged. It was originally suggested that Tenochtitlan had didactyl hands, meaning it had two fingers, which was the main basis for the proposal that it was a Tyrannosaurid. However, Barsbold later clarified that the hands were tridactyl, meaning they had three fingers. Because of this, it is now thought that Tenochtitlan could be either a basal Tyrannosaurid or a basal Solarosaur outside Tyrannosauridia. However, none of this can really be confirmed or deconfirmed until the fossils are actually described. Kalamosaurus foxi, or fox's reed lizard, is a species of small theropod based on two cervical vertebrae found in the Wessex Formation in England, which dates to the Baramian of the early Cretaceous, about 130 to 125 million years ago. 
It is currently believed to be some sort of basal solarosaur, traditionally a compsognathid, although similarities between it and confirmed Tyrannosauride delong may suggest that the two are sister taxa, and therefore Kalamosaurus would be a basal pontyrannosaur. While it is currently considered nomen dubium, this could change further down the line. Another possible Tyrannosauroid that has yet to be described is Futabasaurus, not to be confused with the plesiosaur of the same name. Futabasaurus is the informal name for a genus of theropod dinosaur based on a partial tibia found in the Ashizawa Formation in Japan, which dates to the Coniacian of the Light Cretaceous about 89 to 86 million years ago. The specimen was originally mentioned in 1987 by the nickname Futaba Ryu, and it was later given the name Futabasaurus in 1990 by David Lambert in his book Dinosaur Data Book, in which it was described as a large carnosaur. That same year, Dong Zhiming published a photograph of the specimen and suggested that it was a Tyrannosaurid. Unfortunately, I couldn't find said photograph, so I can't show it to you. Then, in 2006, an elasmosaurid plesiosaur found in Santonian rocks in Japan was described as Futabasaurus suzukii, meaning if the theropod shin is ever named and described, it will have to be given a different name. Like with Tenochisaurus, we're going to have to wait until this theropod is properly described before any precise classification can be given. Chinkangosaurus fragilis, or fragile diamond port lizard, is a dubious species of theropod known only from a partial scapula, which is commonly considered either a tyrannosaurid or a basal tyrannosaurid. It is known from the Jinggangkao formation of the Wangxi group in China, which dates to the Campanian of the late Cretaceous, between 83 and 72 million years ago. This made it a contemporary of the Hadrosaurus, Syntosaurus, Liangosaurus, and Tanias, and as a large theropod, it would likely have been the top predator. If it is indeed a Tyrannosaurid, Chinkangkosaurus could very well be a Tyrannosaurine, closely related to Zhucheng Tyrannus and Tarbosaurus. However, due to the fragmentary remains it is known from, it is currently considered nomen dubium until more conclusive remains can be found. Now we're on to yet another tooth taxon. This time, the dubious Tyrannosaurid Dynodon hordes, or Rough Terrible Tooth. This species is known only from a set of teeth found in the Judith River Formation of Montana, which dates to the Campanian of the Late Cretaceous, about 77 million years ago. It is technically the first Tyrannosaurid to be described by Edward Drinker Cope in 1856. Multiple species have been described for Dynodon, however all these have either been found to belong to other genera or are nomen dubium, including the type species D. Horridus. Studies have shown that the teeth of Dynodon are practically indistinguishable from that of Gorgosaurus, meaning they are very likely the same animal. Although Dynodon is technically the original name, Gorgosaurus would likely take priority since Dynodon is a dubious genus. However, the two likely won't be officially synonymized since Dynodon isn't known for many skeletal remains. So for now, I'd say that Dynodon is very likely the same animal as Gorgosaurus. Oblisodon mirandus, or strange backwards flowing tooth, is another tooth taxon from the Judith River Formation, this time known only from a single premaxillary tooth. Because of this, it is considered a nomen dubium, and it's likely that the tooth simply belongs to a juvenile Dospletosaurus, which is known from contemporary formations. Like Dynodon, Oblisodon has had many species attached to the genus, However, nearly all of these end up belonging to other Tyrannosaurs, and Oblisodon has even been considered a junior synonym of Dynodon. 
This is now considered unlikely, and the two are likely different animals. If Elblicidon is indeed the same animal as Dospletosaurus, the latter would likely take priority since the former is Nomen dubium. Labocania anomala, or anomalous red estuary, primarily refers to the Labocana roja formation where its fossils have been found, which dates to the Campanian about 73 million years ago. It is known from a partial skeleton which consists of skull fragments, teeth, and parts of the tail, hip, fingers, and toes. However, these elements are very fragmentary, so the classification of this animal is difficult to determine beyond it being a large theropod, with most estimates placing it at 6 to 7 meters or 20 to 23 feet long and 1.5 to 2 US tons. It was originally considered a Carcharodontosaurid, but this seems to have fallen out of favor, and the main consensus seems to be that it is either a Tyrannosaurid or an Abelosaurid, with the Tyrannosaurid classification being more likely, as Abelosaurids are completely absent from the North American continent. Therefore, I think it's most likely that Labocania is a Tyrannosaurid, specifically a Tyrannosaurine, possibly related to other Tyrannosaurines known from southern North America, like Lathronax and Teratophonius. Still, this can't be confirmed until we find more fossils, and hey, maybe it will prove to be the very first North American Abelosaurid after all. The last tooth taxon in this video is Diplotomodon horrificus, or dreadful double cutting tooth. This species is based on a single tooth found in Maastrichtian aged rocks in New Jersey, dating sometime between 72 and 66 million years ago. It was first described in 1865 by Joseph Lady under the generic name Tomodon, under the assumption that the animal was a plesiosaur. However, the name Tomodon was already occupied by a genus of snake, so Lady changed it to Diplotomodon in 1868, now believing it was a fish. Then in 1870, Edward Drinker Cope proposed that it was a theropod dinosaur, and while one study in 1955 suggested it was a mosasaur, it's pretty much exclusively considered a titanurin theropod, likely a tyrannosaurid. If it is indeed a Tyrannosaurid, it would likely be a Dryptosaur, since those were the only Tyrannosaurs known from Appalachia during the late Cretaceous. However, the fragmentary nature of the fossil means that Diplotomodon is officially no Mandubium. Begoreaton ostromi, or Ostrum small hunter, is a species of Solurosaur found in the Nemect Formation in Mongolia which is believed to date to the early Maastrichtian about 70 million years ago. Its generic name is derived from the Mongolian words baga meaning small and arayatan meaning hunter or predator, while the specific name honors John Ostrom. It is based on a partial skull and skeleton which was described by Polish paleontologist Holska Osmolska in, in 1996. Based on the skeleton, Begoreaton was a small animal, estimated to reach a length of 3 to 4 meters or 9 to 13 feet long, and a weight of 60 to 65 kilograms or 132 to 143 pounds. The specimen is a unique one, as the skull and skeleton have many characteristics similar to many different types of theropods, mainly Tyrannosaurids and Manoropterans. It has been classified as a basal Tyrannosauroid, a Troodontid, and a basal Manoropteran, and some have even suggested that the skeleton is actually a chimera, containing elements from several different dinosaurs. As such, part of the holotype could very well belong to a Tyrannosauroid, while another part could belong to a Troodontid. Although whether the fossils belong to already existing genera or new animals entirely isn't exactly certain. Raptor Rex Kriegsteini, or Kriegstein's Thief King, is a problematic species. 
Due to it being found by a fossil collector, it is unknown where exactly the holotype specimen, a nearly complete skeleton belonging to a juvenile individual about two to three years old, was found. It was originally thought to come from the Yishan Formation in China, which dates to the early Cretaceous. This would be interesting, as raptor racks showed characteristics far more derived than that of other tyrannosaurids from Yishan like Dilong. This assumption was based on a fish vertebra found with the Raptorax specimen, which was, which was interpreted as belonging to Lycoptera, a common fish in the Yishan. However, this interpretation was questioned during the early 2010s, as several paleontologists suggested that the fossil actually came from the Nemegt Formation, and thus lived during the late Cretaceous. As the fish vertebra was reinterpreted as being similar to that of fish commonly found in Nemect. The fact that the specimen is known to belong to a juvenile has even caused some to suggest that Raptorex is actually just a juvenile Tarbosaurus. This interpretation seems the most likely, as the Raptorex specimen has turned out to be incredibly similar to that of known juvenile Tarbosaurus specimens of the same age and size. So I am under the belief that Raptorex is very simply a juvenile Tarbosaurus. Next is a currently undescribed species of Tyrannosaurid from the Ojo Alamo Formation in New Mexico, which dates from the mid to late Maastrichtian about 69 to 66 million years ago. This animal is known from fragmentary remains, but is believed to be closely related to Tyrannosaurus rex. Although whether it is another species of Tyrannosaurus or a separate genus is unknown at this time. Based on what I've heard, it should be officially described soon, and a common name I've heard for this animal is either Alama Tyrannus or Tyrannosaurus Brinkmani, depending on whether or not it is a species of Tyrannosaurus. Taihi Venator Macropus, or Long-Footed Strong Hunter, is a dubious species of Tyrannosaurid based on a tibia, phalanges, and metatarsals recovered from the Navasink Formation in New Jersey, which dates to the end of the Maastrichtian of the early Cretaceous about 68 to 66 million years ago. Originally described as a species of Dryptosaurus by Cope in 1868, it was reclassified as its own genus in 2017 by Yun Chengyu. However, later that same year, it was found that the phalanges and metatarsals likely belong to an ornithomimosaur, although a study in 2018 found that the tibia did indeed belong to a tyrannosaurid distinct from Dryptosaurus. However, this wasn't considered sufficient enough to base a new taxon on. As such, Taihi Venator is currently no mandubium, however if it is indeed a valid genus, it would likely be a Dryptosaurid closely related to Dryptosaurus. Last but most certainly not least is Nanotyrannus lancensis, or dwarf tyrant from Lance, a potentially invalid species of Tyrannosaurid from the Hell Creek Formation in Montana. It is known from two, possibly three, specimens, the holotype skull, the Jane specimen, and maybe the Bloody Mary specimen, which has yet to be described. Now, Tyrannus has been the subject of controversy for years, and I myself made the mistake of assuming that Nano Tyrannus is 100% confirmed to be a juvenile T-Rex. I don't want this video to go on for too long, so I will explore this topic further in a future video. All I will say for now is that the holotype and Jane very likely belong to the same species. Whether that is now Tyrannus or Tyrannosaurus is greatly debated, and Bloody Mary could very well be the key to solving the mystery once paleontologists finally get their hands on it again. Although it is commonly placed in Tyrannosaurinae due to it being considered a juvenile Tyrannosaurus, if it is indeed a distinct genus, now Tyrannus is more likely to be an Albertosaurine, as it shares many similar features to that of Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. 
That should just wrap it up for the Tyrannosaurids until another species is inevitably described further down the line. Up next will be the creature profile for Rugops, followed by a video where I explain how I would have improved Jurassic Fight Club. Thank you all for watching, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this, and as always, this is PaleoNerd, signing out.